Hi everyone, I'm Aiden. I'm the captain of Free Minds, and I'm gonna explain what neurotransmitters are, give you a few examples, and what effects they have on the mind and the body. Now on page 72 of the textbook, it's explained that neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that carry information across the synapse. Now, they have all kinds of effects on the body from appetite to aggression. The three examples we're gonna be using are all small molecules on page 104 of the textbook. They're serotonin, acetylcholine, and norepinephrine. Textbook, page 109, serotonin participates in the regulation of aggression, uh, the concept of social status, as well as appetite. Now acetylcholine, you can turn to page 56 to read about, and it binds to nicotinic receptors and is involved in the relaxation of muscles, the quieting of the mind, and the lowering of the blood pressure because it's in the parasympathetic nervous system, the relaxing nervous system, you know. And then finally, we've got norepinephrine, the final small molecule on page 106. It is the main neurotransmitter of the sympathetic nervous system. So it's in charge of activating you, diverting blood from your skin and your face to your legs so that you can run, speeding up your heartbeat so that your legs can get even more jacked up, um, giving you a sense of heightened mental focus so that you are locked in and you don't make any mistakes. That's what norepinephrine does. Now, my associate Joseph will explain to you some of the diseases associated with three, these three neurotransmitters. Hi guys, today I'm gonna to talk to you about the disorders and associations that come with serotonin, norepinephrine, and acetylcholine. According to the Cleveland Clinic, this is what comes with having low levels of these three chemicals that your body needs to be producing. First, we'll start with serotonin. Serotonin, having low levels of serotonin can cause depression, anxiety, sleeping problems and schizophrenia, PTSD, and so much more. What could cause low levels of serotonin? Either your body's not producing enough serotonin that it's supposed to, or your serotonin receptors aren't working as they should be. Next, we're gonna go with acetylcholine. Low levels of acetylcholine plays a big role in several diseases. One disease, or disorder is Alzheimer's. And what causes that is that if there's not enough acetylcholine being produced to your brain, that's what could cause the Alzheimer's. There's a lot more factors to it, but it's a big chemical. It's one of the chemicals that ha plays along with the, that disorder. Next, we're gonna go with norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is another chemical that your body produces. You can have too, too little or too much. Having too little of the norepinephrine have a few side effects including allergic reactions, difficulty breathing, irregular heartbeats, and pain or redness, depending if you inject it too much norepinephrine in your body. This also affects your fight or flight response. And a lot of health conditions come with having too little or too much norepinephrine, which cause anxiety, depression, sleeping problems, memory problems, you're changing in blood pressure, or having high blood pressure. Hello everyone, my name is Julie and I'm going to be explaining the difference between inhibitory and excitatory postsynaptic potentials. And excitatory postsynaptic potentials, aka ESPS, occurs when sodium channels open in response to a stimulus. It is classified as a excitatory postsynaptic potential if it increases the likelihood of a postsynaptic action potential from occurring. An ISPS, aka inhibitory postsynaptic potential, is the exact opposite. It is inhibitory postsynaptic potential which is classified as if it decreases the likelihood of the action potential happening. <clears throat> what it is is a temporary hyperpolarization of the postsynaptic membrane caused by the flow of negatively charged ions into the postsynaptic cell. The references I used for this video were Postsynaptic Potentials, Foundations of Neuroscience, Michigan State University, and the National Library of Medicine. Thank you. What's up y'all, I'm Kevin Ortega and I'm gonna be explaining what agonist and antagonist drugs are. An agonist drug is a drug or substance that binds to a receptor inside a cell or on its surface and it causes the same action as the substance that normally binds to the receptor and acting in this drug is when in an interaction between two or more drugs that have 
opposite effects on the body. Hi, I'm Chen Chen. I will introduce two examples of agonist drugs and two antagonist drugs to dopamine. According to page 124, methamphetamine is dopamine agonist. The methamphetamine molecule are taken up by the dopamine transporters. Once inside the axon terminal, the methamphetamine displaces dopamine in the vesicle. Some dopamine is deactivated by the monomine oxidase, but the higher concentration of dopamine in the intracellular fluids disturbs the action of the transporters. The transporter reverse and start pumping dopamine into the gap. According to page 1 to 6, L-DOPA serves as a dopamine agonist by promoting increased dopamine synthesis. According to Young Man's website, close up high is a dopamine antagonist, reduce dopamine activity very too high. It also adjusts dopamine levels in other areas of the brain. According to Frontier website, chlorpromazine binds to dopamine receptor, which blocks dopamine from bending and sending signals. Thank you, that's all. Hi, I'm Caitlin, and now we'll talk about the effects of these four drugs. According to the National Library of Medicine, methamphetamine is a powerful stimulant drug that increases levels of dopamine in the brain, causing intense feelings of pleasure and euphoria. Meth also increases levels of norepinephrine and serotonin, which can lead to increased heart rate, blood pressure, and body temperature. Meth use can cause a range of physical and physiological effects. This includes increased alertness, energy, sociability, as well as agitation, paranoia, and aggression. Chronic meth use can cause long-term damage to the brain and other organs, including heart disease, liver damage, and neurological problems. Next, according to Parkinson.org, L-DOPA is a medication used to treat Parkinson's disease. But L-DOPA works by increasing levels of dopamine in the brain, which can improve movement and reduce tremors. However, long-term use of L-DOPA can cause side effects, including abnormal involuntary movements, hallucination, and confusion. According to the National Library of Medicine, clozapine treats schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders. Clozapine works by blocking dopamine receptors in the brain, which can reduce psychotic symptoms such as delusions and hallucinations. Clozapine also affects serotonin and other neurotransmitters, which can improve, improve mood and reduce anxiety. However, clozapine can cause side effects, including weight loss, sedation, and potentially life-threatening conditions, which can suppress the immune system. Lastly, according to Medline, chlorpromazine treats schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and other psychotic disorders. Chlorprosamine works by blocking dopamine receptors in the brain, which can reduce psychotic symptoms. It can also cause sedation, in reduce anxiety, and relieve nausea and vomiting. However, this drug can cause side effects including weight gain, constipation, dry mouth, and symptoms such as tremors, tremors and muscle stiffness. Thank you for listening.